direct from the six, world-renowned, Canada's largest city, with Canada's biggest thinkers, visionaries, and hustlers. This is Startup Talk, featuring the founders, funders, innovators, and community leaders who've led Canada's startup ecosystem right here in Toronto. You'll hear the challenges, the failures, the successes. Toronto's Startup Podcast gives you the full story direct from the entrepreneurs and influencers who've made a difference. Now, the host of Startup Talk, the founder of Toronto Starts, the Startup Coach. The entrepreneurs understand not a, there's a lot of issues going on in economics and, and investors are more risk averse. With the interest rate increase, the current economic and political environment, uh, increasing risks to investors, and the Canadian government changing capital gains taxation rules, is it still worth it for Canadian investors to risk funding startups? I certainly think so. As someone absolutely. who does it myself, uh, I feel like it, it absolutely is. Sure, the the you know the capital gains tax change is slightly annoying, but the if you actually look at like the number of situations where it's going to be directly applicable, um, you know, it's, it's a minor change. It's not 66% is getting taxed. It's the inclusion rate, you know, when you pass 250,000 is going up from 50 to 66. So it's, it's annoying. Sure. Uh, would we prefer it wasn't there? Yes. But is it something that's going to sort of stop what I would be doing normally? No, uh, it, it wouldn't sort of be interrupting that. I don't think so. It's still still a great time to to invest in uh, Canadian businesses. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in. The thing that I think yeah, a lot of people I, I think appreciate the is that underlying. Oh, am I on? No, I can I can hear you, Jeff. I think maybe okay, okay, Graham's sorry. got some leg. <laughs> uh, the I think what a lot of people don't appreciate is that um, a lot of angel investors aren't actually in it for the return on investment, which is sort of shocking to think about. But um, it's a part of their portfolio that's kind of a give back part of portfolio. There certainly are some that are in it for getting good returns. But uh, I know a number of angel investors who, you know, are uh, have ample funds, let's say. <laughs> who don't really think about return on investment, they want to invest and support good companies and move them ahead, but they're not really there just to, you know, get a, a great IRR over a five-year period. That's not their motivation. Um, my own personal experience, um, you know, don't, I, I've been investing now for just over six years and um, I've just had my first exit last week. Round of applause. Congratulations. Yes. So, you know, uh, and I don't expect any of my other ones to probably exit for a number of years. So you've got to be patient as an, um, an investor. And hopefully your motivations go beyond um, getting a great return because you can always buy NVIDIA shares, I guess, if you want a good return or a bad return, depending on what, weeks, what week you buy them. Yeah. That's, That's my two cents on that. Graham? Yeah, I, I think like... As annoying as the changes are, it doesn't really change, I think, the fundamental math behind angel investing, which is kind of it's one of the few places where you have kind of asynchronous risk and return of like, if you put 50 into a company, it can return millions or and your downside is limited to the 50 you put in. And I think the reality is if you make 10 bets, the capital gains change has an impact on the ones that are going to kind of return close to the capital you put in them, but it's not going to wipe out the reason to find one that kind of wins and returns the overall portfolio. So for me, no material impact on activity in Canada. I do think it continues to raise the bar though, that for what you're looking for, for companies. And I think to me, that has more to do with companies that are actually solving interesting problems versus I think what we sometimes see a lot in the ecosystem when people are saying it's really hard to get funding, it's like, no, great ideas and great companies typically find funding pretty quickly. Mediocre ideas tend to struggle a lot to find funding. Um, and I think it's pulled a lot of people out of the, maybe more of the charitable funding side that are funding companies that maybe shouldn't have gotten funding or needed to be up and refined before they, they got uh, investment. Hmm. You, you make a good point, Graham. And I always, whenever I'm talking to founders, I always like kind of 
reminding them or, or re-emphasizing the definition of a startup and how that compares to the definition of a small business. Because certainly there's, there's a lot of times where you speak to a founder and they're pitching you their idea and they're saying, hey, you know, I'm always struggling to get capital and raise for my company. And then you actually hear the pitch and you realize you're a small business, you're not a startup. So there actually isn't any investors at this angel group that's going to that's going to invest in your deal in the first place. So just quickly for everyone, small business uh, is basically any local small business. So if you're tackling a localized or a smaller problem, if you don't have a unique differentiator from your competitors, so like if you're a restaurant or a grocery store or a bar or just a clothing shop or something like that, a startup specifically needs to be typically a tech driven company that's going to aim for rapid scaling. You're tackling over a billion dollar sized market. You have a unique differentiator that will clearly separate you and it's not just uh, a list of um of perks or or you know things that your your business does but an actual unique differentiator from your competitors and you're built and structured with investors in mind so you're planning on raising capital to fuel this rapid growth with a clearly defined exit to generate return for those investors at the end a lot of people are saying you know what i'm starting this company but i don't ever want to exit or i'm running this business and it's a cool thing but it's not a tech driven startup it's not highly scalable and they're saying you know i've i've come to hundreds of events and i've pitched all the time and nobody funds me it's like these investors angel investors this whole activity this ecosystem is designed around tech driven startups you go to angels first and then to venture capital and then on to private equity and all the way along you've got the the great grant program and everything like that it's built around technology development for Exactly what you said, Graham, about sort of groundbreaking problem solving, which which is sort of what the industry is looking for. I'll just add that, Alex, you're, you're, I completely agree with what you're saying, but I think it's not just tech, but it's mm-hmm. it's anything that can can scale to 30x over right. a five year period, right? And that yeah. isn't always tech, but it, it tends to be mostly tech. So right, you're right. Mostly, yeah. Thank you for that correction. No, you're totally correct. Like I, yeah. one startup that I just invested in is is not tech at all. Uh, so yeah, just uh, you're totally right. But it has to have the ability to scale rapidly. That's the key. And and of course, it, you know, I sometimes I, founders are like, well, we need two years worth of funding. And we're going to be profitable in six months. It's like, well, <laughs> somehow this doesn't. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense what is being asked for, and so. You need that. You're right. There's that progression. There's the gates of funding as to scale the venture. And there's only certain type of companies that fit into that category. This has been Startup Talk, Toronto's startup podcast. For more exclusive content, the episode vault, and to be part of Toronto Starts community, visit torontostarts.com. Get your name on the newsletter mailing list and check out our upcoming events. For more episodes, subscribe now. And please recognize the time and work behind the scenes put into connecting you with the biggest visionaries, entrepreneurs, and innovators in Toronto by leaving a five-star review. Join us for more next episode from Toronto's most active entrepreneur and startup community on Startup Talk.